Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at M phase or mitosis. Uh, so in M phase, we can see that there are actually two things that happen in M phase. We have mitosis as well as cytokinesis. Now, M phase, though, if you are talking about producing gametes like sperm or egg, then they would be meiosis followed by cytokinesis. But this video will focus on mitosis, um, not meiosis. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about M phase. So M phase, like I mentioned, has two parts. We have mitosis, which is the division of the nucleus, as you can see in this gift below, as well as cytokinesis happening right now, where the cytoplasm actually divides into two. Now, the cytokinesis part happens different if you are a plant cell or an animal cell. In a plant cell, uh, because it has that rigid cell wall, it's not going to like divide like an animal cell. Instead, it would actually build a new cell wall between the two nuclei. But okay, so let's go ahead and look at the steps. So we saw in my previous video on interphase how in G1, uh, the cell's living its life, then it goes into S phase where the DNA duplicates and we have twice as much DNA. So let's go ahead and zoom in here uh, to this like uncondensed DNA, this chromatin. So if we were to divide this cell at this point um, without organizing the DNA, it would be very difficult to make sure that we get two identical daughter cells. So uh, the very first part, one of the very first things that happens in M phase or in mitosis is that the DNA will actually condense. So if you ever look at a cell underneath a microscope and you see like a dark circle, that is the nucleus, and that's all the uncondensed um, chromatin. However, you'll see some pictures where the in the nucleus, it looks like little worms. And that's, that's like condensed DNA in prophase. So when I say condense, it takes basically that chromatin and it tightly coils up into actual, like under a microscope, visible chromosomes. So here we have 46 condensed, duplicated uh, chromosomes. So each of these little X's, remember, are made out of um, identical sister chromatids. Now I do wanna make a key point right here. In like humans, for example, when we talk about females are XX and males are XY, this is not the X that that is talking about. Um, these are like in this picture, we have 46 chromosomes here and they are in duplicated form. Okay, that is what we're talking about here. So each of these it, are like um, sides to this chromosome is an identical sister chromatid. Okay, that we're hoping to separate. Now it'd be too difficult and too confusing to make all of mitosis with 46 chromosomes. So for the remainder of my video, I'm just gonna use four, which could very easily be happening in the fly, in the body of a fly, a fruit fly called Drosophila. They have only four chromosomes. Uh, so again, here, this is one duplicated chromosome made of two identical sister chromatids. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the phases of mitosis. So first, we're going to start with prophase. And we're thinking about like the big picture, right? In mitosis, followed by cytokinesis, we are hoping to divide the nucleus into two and then divide the cytoplasm so we get two identical daughter cells. So we start with um, duplicated uncondensed chromosomes. So in this picture, you can see these like uh, basically chromatin that's been duplicated. So our first thing we're going to do is condense these chromosomes. And that is where you see that stereotypical X shape for a chromosome. It only exists in like half of M phase. This is not how cells DNA always look. Okay, and then since mitosis means to divide the nucleus, we're going to break down the nuclear envelope. Now, during um, uh, interphase, we actually had these centrosomes forming. I just didn't mention them in my interphase video. And a centrosome is made out of uh, basically two centrioles. Um, these centrioles are what are going to produce the spindle fibers we'll see in metaphase. So again, in prophase, the chromosomes condense 
and actually become visible underneath the microscope. Uh, the nuclear envelope breaks down and the centrosomes, like the whole red circle thing right there is a centrosome and it's made of two centrioles. So each of those little yellow like cylinder things are a centriole. Okay, so now in metaphase, the chromosomes, now we want to keep in mind our big our big goal is to take these duplicated chromosomes and divide them in half. So each daughter cell gets one. Like that is the big picture of what we are trying to do. So we want to line up all of our chromosomes in the middle of the cell so we can divide them evenly. It would be like in class if the teacher said, okay, partner up and make a line and then took half the kids to one side and half the kids to the other side, you'd have them divided evenly into two groups. Like that's really what we're trying to do. So here, the centrioles are going to send out spindle fibers. If you're in AP Bio, the spindle fibers are uh, a microtubules, which is similar like to the cytoskeleton of the cell, um, and they'll attach to the kinetochore. If you're not in AP Bio, then um, the spindle fibers, you can just think about them attaching to the centromere or the center of the two uh, sister chromatids. Okay, so here we have some spindle fibers that have been sent out and they attach to like the center of this duplicated chromosome. Now, what really happens is they're they're playing like a tug of war on these. So the, the spindle fibers from the top are pulling one way. The spindle fibers from the other side are pulling the other way. And it ends up like as a tie, basically, along the middle of the cell. Now, in reality, uh, not all spindle fibers actually attach to a chromosome, as you can see, some of them have just been sent out and never actually attached to anything. <laughs> That's okay. But what we're seeing here in metaphase is that the duplicated chromosomes have moved to the middle of the cell. Now, at this point, um, before we divide and pull apart these sister chromatids, um, if you're an AP bio, this is actually an M phase checkpoint. We're going to make sure that every a chromosome has a spindle fiber on each side. Okay, so that way they're all attached on each side of the chromosome. Because now in anaphase, the sister chromatids are going to get pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. So as they are getting pulled to opposite sides of the cell, um, once you separate them, we consider them to be individual chromosomes. So they're no longer called sister chromatids at this point. They are now individual chromosomes. This is also, though, how each new cell gets an exact copy of the DNA. Because remember, this chromosome in S phase uh, made an exact copy, a replicate or a duplicate. And then now in anaphase, they're getting pulled apart. So as they get pulled apart, each daughter cell is going to get an exact copy. And this is how we get identical daughter cells. Okay. Um, and, oh, I wanted to mention, too, that the proteins that are helping to hold the sister chromatids together, here in anaphase, they get broke, broken down, and that's why they're able to get pulled apart. Okay, so now we're moving into telophase. And in telophase, um, we're pretty much finishing up mitosis. We're going to build new nuclear envelopes and our DNA is going to uncondense and go back to that chromatin. Now here in my picture, it's not as messy as the first time because I am, I'm only working with four chromosomes instead of all 46 that we would normally see in a human a cell. So this might be like a fly cell, right? A fruit fly. And so here at the end of telophase, we have two new nuclear envelopes. And basically it's one cell with two nuclei. Uh, but we can't stop here, right? We still only have one cell, but we've doubled the DNA. So technically mitosis is finished at this point at telophase. But uh, we still need to divide the cell into two. And that process is called cytokinesis. So in cytokinesis, it's basically the division of the cytoplasm and dividing it into two identical daughter cells. And now these cells are back in G1 and can start the cell cycle all over again. 
Okay, so that is my discussion on the cell cycle. Um, I do want to point out the only thing I didn't add is that when the cells are dividing, so right here, like for animal cells, uh, there's actually like a, a ring that kind of, not a ring, but like a, a microtubule ring that forms to kind of like cut the cytoplasm in half right here. And this space is called the cleavage furrow in animal cells. So if you're an AP bio, the cleavage furrow is kind of like the um, location of where that cytoplasm is pinching in. Uh, if it's in a plant cell, it'd be called a new cell plate is forming between the two nuclei. All right, good job.